Hi everyone and welcome to morning coffee break. I hope everybody's doing good today. It's Friday, April 12th, almost Friday the 13th, but not. Uh, currently it's 50 degrees, high today is going to be 55. It's going to start warming up uh, to where like that one day I think next week is like 81 or something like that. So that's going to be great. Uh, chance of uh, rain 66%. We've been getting quite a bit of rain. Uh, winds at 16 mile per hour have been very windy. Um, we're, we're supposed to be able to mow tomorrow. It should be dry enough, I believe, according to the forecast. I mowed that bank back there um, yesterday, and I'm glad I did because that makes it so much easier on me the day that we mow the rest of the yard. And trying to do all that all the trim for the whole yard and then that bank afterwards is just too much it really is so i'm gonna try to do that the day before usually or a couple of days before but um got that done and then hopefully tomorrow it'll be dry enough to where we can finish um, okay today there'll be an ask my tablet everybody it's been a little while since i've done one uh, as always, if you have some questions for Ask My Tablet, just put them in the comments and let me know that's what it's for. Uh, and for dinner, you know, about a couple weeks ago, I, I made, I had a, you know, I've been working on the stuff out of the freezer, which I got that one almost empty. And now it's almost full. No, it's three-fourths full. Um, never did get that ice cleaned out yet. But anyway, um, I got, I had a, a big old pork but that I put in the crock pot and then I shredded it and made um, barbecue. Well, it was enough for that meal that day and enough for two more meals. So it's three meals. Um, so I put some of that out to thaw or in the fridge, you know, to thaw. And then I'll probably, I'll probably, it probably won't all the way be thawed. It's a big block, you know. But uh, anyway, I have to thaw that out and we're going to have barbecue sandwiches. And we're going to make, uh, Joy's probably going to make it herself, but if she needs help, I'll be glad to. Uh, she's making, I think it's called Amish macaroni salad. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Uh, she's making that. And then I think we'll have some deli wedges uh, with that. So that'll be a really good meal. Okay. Uh, I've got a taste test, everybody. I got this at Walmart and I had, um, I think it was a dollar off. I bought a rebate on it, and they were supposed to have, this one is the Magnum Ice Cream Double Caramel Iced Coffee. It's made by Victor Allen's, and uh, they were supposed to have had a, a cookies and cream one that I was wanting to get as well, but they were out of it, so I'll look for that next time. Hopefully, they'll still have a dollar off, too. That helps a lot, but um, yeah, this is made with Victor Allen's coffee, and let's look at the this isn't something I would have very often for myself, you know. Uh, if you drink the whole thing, it's 240 calories, 4% uh, total fat, 10% saturated fat, no trans fat, 3% of cholesterol, 10% of sodium, 17% of carbs, 4% of fiber, 68% of sugars. If you drink the whole thing, and I'm not going to drink the whole thing. Uh, protein, 6 grams, 15% calcium, and 20% potassium. So that's a pretty good number. Okay, looking at this right now, you know, lots of sugar, yeah. Uh, the fat is not really that bad. Um, the sodium, 10%. I'm surprised there's not much sodium in something that's supposed to be caramel. Um I'm going to give it like a 3.75 out of 5, you know, almost a 4 out of 5 for uh, nutrition facts. Now, let's see what this tastes like. I can find out where, it, I guess that's where it's supposed to. Oh, the whole thing comes off. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Uh, 
um, this is good, but you, do you remember the stock? I think that's what it called the stock uh, uh, iced coffee that I got at, or it's cold brewed or something like that, that I got at grocery outlet. I prefer the taste of that one a little bit over this one, even though this tastes really good, because it had less sugar in it and uh, not as near of sweet taste. This is really sweet. It's, it's good, but I don't, I like to taste a little bit of the coffee, you know, and it's got, a, it's, like I said, it's got a good taste though. But I, for me, as far as iced coffee, I like to be able to taste the coffee too. Uh, this one's um, definitely uh, like a caramel taste. It is awful good though. But I, for myself, I prefer the, the other one I had that was not as sweet. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll give that a 4.75 out of 5. Close to a, a, a perfect uh, score. Um, just because I, I would prefer it to be less sweet for me, you know. So try that. I got them at Walmart. I'm sure they probably have them elsewhere too. Uh, and I don't know if they'd be in the coffee section or the. This was in. They got a little section where all the iced coffees are at Walmart. I don't think it, it wasn't where the coffee aisle is. It was where drinks like near where the iced tea section and stuff is. I think it was like one over from that. Maybe different at yours. So anyway, yeah, pretty good. Uh, 3.75 out of 5 for nutrition facts and 4.75 out of 5 for taste. Okay, let's do our jokes of the day. Just once, I want a username and password prompt to say, close enough. <laughs> so would I. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> A man with a nagging secret couldn't keep it any longer. In the confessional, he admitted that for years he had been stealing building supplies from the lumber yard where he worked. And that happened here in town. Uh, there was this lumber yard that they went out of business. But I don't know if that was the reason. They had a lot of employees that were just robbing them blind as a lumber yard. That was many years ago, maybe 30 years ago or so. Uh, uh, what did you take? The priest, his priest asked. Enough to build my own house and enough for my son's house. And houses for our two daughters and our cottage at the lake. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is very serious, the priest said. I shall have to think of a far-reaching penance. Have you ever done a retreat? No, father, I hadn't, the man replied. But if you can get the plans, I can get the lumber. <laughs> I think he meant, you know, go to a retreat, you know, <laughs> not to build one. That's pretty good. Okay, this thought of the day is from Phil Connors. It says from Groundhog Day. I'd love to stand here and talk with you, but I'm not going to. <laughs> that was Bill Murray, I believe. It was. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay, here we go. Uh, I had it down here. It was this one. Uh, this is... Uh, let's do, go to the quiz. What is the most common bird on earth? Quail, chicken, goose, duck. The most common. Quail, chicken, goose, duck. I would think it'd be chicken. Everybody has chicken, you know, chickens. I'm going to say chicken. Yeah. The most common bird in the world is the domestic chicken. In 2018, it was estimated that there were around 23.7 billion chickens in the world, up from 14.38 billion in the year 2000. Wow, it really grew. <laughs> Chickens are mainly kept for egg laying and meat 
with China alone producing 529 billion eggs in 2017. Okay. What sense do most migratory birds have to help them navigate? Let me show some birds. Uh, electro reception, infrared sensing, magneto reception, echolocation. I don't know if I can say them again. I'll try. Electro reception, infrared sensing, magnetor, magneto, magneto reception, echolocation. I think it's like, you know, uh, what do they call it? Uh, radar. It's echolocation. No, that's wrong. It sounded good, though, didn't it? <laughs> Magneto reception is a sense which allows an organism to detect, the, to detect the Earth's magnetic field. Animals with this sense include some arthropods, mollusks, and vertebrates, fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. The sense is mainly used for orientation and navigation. I didn't know that. Okay, what happens to birds during molting? Uh, growth is stimulated. Females lay eggs. Feathers are replaced. Growth is inhibited. Okay, growth is stimulated, females lay eggs, feathers are replaced, growth is inhibited. I think it's feathers. Yeah, feathers are replaced. In biology, molting or molting, American English, also known as sl sloughing, shedding, or in many invertebrates, ectysis. Okay, that's enough of those crazy words. Bald and golden are types of which bird? Pigeon, eagle, peacock, flamingo. Hey, Emma, look at that bald peacock over there. Isn't that something? Or how about, check out that golden flamingo. <laughs> uh, uh -oh. Otis, there's that there bald pigeon on the on the back porch. <laughs> it's it's eagle. I was having fun with that, but eagle is the common name for many large birds of prey of the family Asipetridae. Eagles belong to several groups or genera, some of which are close, closely related. Yeah. What bird features in the title of the famous Harper Lee novel? Never heard of Harper Lee before. What bird is featured? But I have an idea of what it is because I remember the name of a book. Mockingbird, owl, robin, eagle. Here's a little bird. Say, what's up? Okay. I think it is, and I'll say them again, Mockingbird, Owl, Robin, Eagle. It's To Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird takes place in the fictional town of Maycomb, Alabama during the Great Depression. And it tells about the book. Which bird was traditionally taken into a coal mine to detect toxic gas? I've heard this and seen this in movies as well. Wren, Blackbird, Canary, Parrot. Wren, blackbird, canary, parrot. I'd want a parrot to so be like, I smell gas. <laughs> you could tell you, you know, I, I smell gas. Wren, <laughs> blackbird, canary, parrot. It's a canary. Yeah. The classic example of a bird taken into a coal mine to detect toxic gas is the canary in the coal mine. The idea of placing a warm-blooded animal in a mine to detect carbon monoxide was first proposed by John Scott Haldane in 1895. The canaries were used as early as 1896. Uh, poor canaries. Uh, now they got, like, just the detector things. 
that what is it co2 detector or whatever it is that they just have on their shirt or something i, th I think that's what it is uh, what bird is traditionally associated with pirates our our matey penguin hawk dove parrot I, me penguin is gonna help me today. <laughs> ah, let him see the dove. They'll be scared. No, you think of it. It's it's a parrot sitting on their shoulder. <laughs> I don't even want to go uh, think of anything. I'd have to think of something funny, but. Uh, you know, I can see the parrot, you know, saying, Ah, matey, it's a parrot. <laughs> I can't see a, pe a penguin on his shoulder. Ever since Long John Silver clumped around on a wooden leg with a parrot on his shoulder, the literary and pop culture conception of pirates has involved a parrot. But at this point, the fact is very hard to separate from fiction. What exactly about a classic pirate Halloween costume, the parrot, the peg leg, the eye patch, the bandana, the snarling accent, ah, is real, actually real? Uh, do, 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 uh, they're just talking about different ones, parrots, <laughs> walking around with a pet parrot. Which bird has the longest bill? It shows a bird. Has the longest bill. Wow. Heron, Toucan, Flamingo, Albatross. Heron, Toucan, Flamingo, Albatross. I'm trying to think. When was the last time I saw a Toucan? I saw him in the store on cereal. Yeah, that was it. Uh, Fruit Loops is that? Yeah, Fruit Loops. Heron, Toucan, Flamingo, Albatross. It's I'm gonna say Toucan. Yeah. The uh, Toco Toucan. This Amazon avian's famously colorful bill also happens to be the largest in the bird class, a whopping 7.5 inches long. Next question. I got seven right and one wrong. Two more questions. To which family of birds does the Andean congor, condor belong? And it shows a pigeon. <laughs> Look at that bald pigeon. <laughs> okay. Uh, vulture, crow, swan, pelican. Uh, vulture, crow, swan, pelican. I saw um, there was a... a there was a, um, what is it? Oh, raccoon. There's there's obviously raccoons somewhere around here because there was one that was across the street, but they were on vacation. And it was in their front yard. And somebody called the police because it was acting funny or it was, I don't know if it was frothing at the mouth or what. And there's a woman police officer and she came over, you could see her, you know, out there. She had her flashlight. And, but I didn't know what she was doing at first. And she shot her gun, I think twice. But I didn't know, I didn't know it was, you know, a raccoon or whatever. I was just like going, what? She's shooting her gun, you know? And then she just left. Uh, she killed that raccoon and just left it laying there. I guess she, I don't know if she knocked on their door. But they weren't there. They weren't going to be home for another few days. And uh, the next day, I looked out there, and there was a huge, I think it was called a turkey vulture around here. Man, I didn't realize how big them things were until it started, uh, when it started to move around, kind of jumping, and it put its uh, wings out. That thing must have been four-foot uh, wingspan. I swear, I was like, what? You know, it's really big. And it ate on that thing for a while. I hope it didn't make it sick. So anyway, I, vulture, crow, swan, pelican. I think it's vulture. Yeah. 
The Andean condor is a giant South American cathartid vulture and is the only mem member of the genus Vultura, found in the Andes Mountains and adjacent Pacific coast of Western South America. South America. The Andean condor is the largest flying bird in the world. One more. Uh, which bird is known for its distinctive call that sounds like laughter? Kookaburra, capuchin bird, common loon, sandhill crane, um, uh, kookaburra, capuchin bird, common loon, sandhill crane. I, I might get this one wrong because I'm not for sure, but I think it was a kookaburra. Yeah, okay. The laughing kookaburra native to eastern Australia makes a very familiar call sounding like raucous laughter. Their call is used to establish territory among family groups, most often at dawn and dusk. Okay, so I ended up with nine right and one wrong. Not too bad. I didn't realize I knew that much about birds. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's trivia time, morning coffee and morning coffee break. If you did, I hope you'll press that like button. Also, subscribe if you haven't already and share this out. And hit that so you get all my videos as soon as they come out. Definitely check out Ask My Tablet later on today. Get you some brainer size in. Bye, everybody, and God bless.